A transparent, balloon-like shell now crowns the Martian trench, its curvature stretching along the perimeter like a living dome, engineered to hold and shape the planet's first breathable atmosphere. This time, a few years in the making, it was tested by the meteorites entering the new atmosphere as it slowly burns into the condensed shell atmosphere. Suggesting that it was compact with air due to the friction, the tiny meteorite burned, and it did not even touch the ground. The place is surrounded by drones and every happening is recorded and studied, and just as they taught, the trench is now safe and fit for human habitation. What began as fibrous ozone has evolved into a stable, inflated shield, pulsing gently with the rhythm of ozone gas pumping beneath. Inside, earthborn air is continuously released into the trench, pressurizing the environment and slowly triggering a cascade of change. Scientists at this point are now very happy as they knew the exploration had been into success. It was all very self-fulfilling about this breakthrough. It's worth it. Now they are ready to explore the new world, in their mind. They all have something to do, to make it more habitable for humans. Beneath the surface, condensation forms pools of liquid water. An early echo of Earth's hydrological cycle. As the Martian sun reaches its peak, the trapped heat stirs this young system into motion, initiating the planet's first simulated air and water cycle. Above, faint shadows dance across the dome. Birds, carried here from Earth, they circle this alien sky with hesitant grace, wings spread wide over red soil and unfamiliar cliffs. Though strangers to this terrain, they begin to adapt, sensing instinctively that this place, while foreign, is now theirs to explore. Despite Mars's weaker gravity, the newly pressurized atmosphere within the dome provides enough resistance to stabilize their flight and movement. Their weight feels almost the same as it did on Earth, not because gravity has changed, but because the engineered environment mimics the balance of lift, drag, and pressure they evolve to navigate. They imagine the reason is probably because they are way below the Mars crust, and the pressure was pulled down to their body was enough to equate their weight when they are on the Earth's surface. How deep is this trench here? Says the woman scientist. I think it's about 10 miles. I can say we are at the safest location right now. Mars is no longer silent. Life, however borrowed, has begun to echo through the trench. Thanks to the help of nanotrees, they really help a lot in building the Mars ecosystem. Half of their trunk is water, and it helps a lot to the ground surface, as they absorb 98% of the carbon dioxide from the Mars trench, helping the ecosystem become an Earth-like environment. It's all thanks to the advancement of technology, the fast growth of these nanotrees, because to sufficient carbon dioxide on Mars, the place is now becoming greener and greener. Sooner or later, this place will be the place for those who are willing to leave planet Earth and try their luck in an alien world. That was terraformed by man. Now the chances of humankind's survival are doubled. Human never stops exploring outer space. This is the nature of humankind, to live and survive anywhere it wishes to live.